Hey everyone, welcome to my kitchen here in Los Angeles, California. My name is Jocelyn Ramirez. I am the chef and founder of Polo Verde and welcome to this class where we'll be making a mushroom milanesa torta. I wanna thank our friends at Honda for making this class possible and of course Taste Made for hosting us. So we are gonna get into cooking, but feel free to jump in in the chat ask any questions that come up. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, and also, if you want to let me know what your favorite road trip destination is and whether you're somebody who plans ahead and packs a meal or if you love just eating out on the road, seeing what you're able to find, um, throw that in the chat. And I'd love to hear what some of your favorite uh, dishes are that you like to tag along with you on your road trips. I'm a snack queen. So whether I'm taking a flight or driving somewhere on a road trip, I always have a huge bag of snacks. Uh, that's just my vibe. So I'm excited to share this meal with you. So I'm gonna jump right into it. We're going to get into the mushrooms, give them some time to cook, and then kind of assemble and get everything else ready for our mushroom milanesa torta, which I'm so excited to share. So I'm gonna be using some king oyster mushrooms. Uh, sometimes you can also find trumpet mushrooms, which are a similar variety. And they are definitely not your average white button mushroom, which are the mushrooms that I actually grew up in, uh, grew up with in my neighborhood. Uh, so different in terms of texture, flavor profile, kind of what you can do with them. Just the the difference of um, how they absorb flavor is is just so different in comparison to white button or even you know a, a cremini mushroom. So I really love using. Uh, king oyster mushrooms, oyster mushroom varieties, and then of course cremini, portobello as other options. Um, but I am kind of obsessed with mushrooms. It's a little bit weird. I have mushroom paste, mushroom powder, mushroom everything in this house. Um, but I love using mushrooms to add umami flavor to dishes. So this is definitely going to be a good one. So what you want to do is you'll notice that, uh, you know, it has a pretty long stem with the, the tip of the mushroom on the top. So first thing I like to do is you can just kind of feel your mushrooms and you can feel that it, you have an area that has like a little bit more give. Uh, it's a little bit softer to the touch. And then sometimes towards the base of the stem, you might feel a little bit more of um, like tough, tough uh, of, of a base. And so what I want to do is I want to just use my knife to just cut a little bit of that off because if it feels tough, then it's going to be tough when I try to cook it. So I just maybe took off about a half an inch off of this mushroom. I'll feel the others and this one actually feels okay. I'll just cut a tiny bit off, maybe about a quarter inch um, and just make sure that I'm getting sort of the most tender pieces of the mushroom. And then once I do that, I'll just discard this or I can use it in a stock or compost it. I also wanna just cut off the, the top portion you can go either way. You can, sorry, I'm like going back and forth on the camera here. You can either cut off the top portion or you can just go ahead and include it and uh, slice it right up. The reason I just like to cut it off is because if I slice it lengthwise this way, then um, I'll just have a little bit of unevenness in terms of the, the size. So if I cut that off, I have a nice flat piece. So pretty much I'm trying to get as many flat pieces as possible. And then I'll cut lengthwise to uh, about a quarter inch size or so to get my other flat pieces of mushroom. And so I'll just kind of keep going through and cutting up my mushroom top and then cutting and slicing through. So uh, someone's asking if I've ever had mushroom coffee. Actually, there is a brand that sends me mushroom coffee often. And funny enough, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> um, so I actually end up giving it to friends. My partner, he actually does not love mushrooms. He grew up eating white button mushrooms and is a, a supposedly, a quote unquote, supposedly not a fan of mushrooms. But when it's like mixed into stuff, he doesn't even know it's a textural thing. So the flavor is always there. He just doesn't enjoy biting into a mushroom. Um, so I, I found my ways to, to make it work. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Any other questions that anybody has in the chat, feel free to throw them in there and I am going to be able, uh, I'll try my best to answer them as I go along. So you can see here, I have these nice slices of mushroom bits that are going to cook very evenly in my 
oil to make a really nice crunchy milanesa. So now that I have my mushroom pieces all sliced up and ready to go, I'm gonna get my wet mixture going. So I have here a half a cup of plant-based milk that I'm gonna add to this bowl here. And so I'm just gonna add it in. I'm going to add some seasoning to it and I'll bring it up here so you can see it even better. There we go. I have here a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and I also have a quarter teaspoon of cumin powder that I'm just going to add to that. And then I'm also going to add some liquid aminos. I have a half teaspoon. I love adding liquid aminos because it's another ingredient that's very umami rich. So is garlic powder, so are mushrooms. So the more of that that you add, the more delicious this dish will be. I also have a tablespoon of Dijon mustard that I'm going to add. So I'll use my little spatula here and add that in. Other ingredients that you could potentially add are, you know, onion powder, nutritional yeast. You can be crazy like me. I didn't, I didn't include this in the ingredient list, but I'll sometimes add mushroom powder to mushrooms. Um, typically, por porcini mushroom powder um, is really nice because it has a really nice uh, depth of flavor. And so once all those ingredients are in there, I'm also going to add a good amount of salt. I'll add a couple pinches of salt here. And then I'm going to just whisk everything together. Until you get your nice little wet mixture. It's definitely runny. It's not as thick as a batter. It's just uh, uh, something to just get the mushrooms a little bit damp so that they can get a good grip of the flour that we have as well as the breadcrumbs. So now that I have that, you can give it a little taste if you want. You can put a little dot on the back of your hand, give it a little taste. It should taste garlicky. It should, you should be able to taste the, the mustard. I'm going to add another little bit of salt. I want this to be a little bit salty just because obviously this is the main way that we're seasoning our mushrooms. And then of course you can always add more seasoning, whether it's to the wet mixture or if it's directly to the dry seasoning, you can always add it. So now what I'm gonna be doing here, let me grab my tongs. I'm going to just add the mushrooms to the wet mixture, then I'm gonna bring it over to the flour, which is a half a cup of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna sort of tap that off, add it one more time into the wet mixture, and then I'm gonna bring it into some panko breadcrumbs or if you have some breadcrumbs already at home from a meal that you made or bread that's about to spoil or whatever it may be, you can totally use that. And I'm actually gonna just start dropping these directly into oil that I have in my skillet. I have a cast iron skillet that's been preheating with some oil in it. And it's nice and hot. I don't know if you can hear that sizzle. I'll get closer to the mic. Hopefully you hear that little bit of sizzle. And I'm going to let that start working. And I'll keep going. So let's see here. There we go. Let me grab another headphone just to make sure you can hear me properly. There we go. And I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to keep adding a few pieces at a time now, now that I've demoed that first one, just to kind of give you a sense of what that looks like. You just want to get the mushrooms a little bit moist, bring them into the flour just to get a little bit of a coating, bring it back into my wet mixture, and then I'll bring them into the breadcrumbs. There we go and I'll drop them directly into my oil. So you can see it's super easy. This is something that you can absolutely do. Get the mushrooms ready the day of, the morning of your road trip. If you're taking it, I mean, you might just be eating it on a weeknight, who knows? <laughs> um, but it's something that you can definitely kind of get up on or get all your ingredients all mixed out on the day that you're gonna take your trip. and then. And then you can just uh, assemble it or bring it together on the morning of, the day before. On the day before, maybe on the morning of, if you cook them the day before, on the morning of, you can go ahead and just like pop them in a toaster oven or in an oven just to get them nice and hot again. 
So I'm gonna flip over my first mushroom and I'll bring it to the camera in a little bit so you can see how golden and nice they are getting. I'm just cooking them on one side, the first side for maybe like one to three minutes or so. You can see the color. Once you get that nice golden color, you can start to flip them over. So the others are still not quite ready to flip. And it, even though they're, they're cooking in oil, you're always gonna have a few hot spots. So you might have an area that's cooking at a little bit of a faster rate than the others. And so you just wanna kind of keep your eye on that hot spot and make sure you're not burning anything. So let's see. Oh, and I wanna make sure that I show you what the first mushroom is looking like. Just give me one second and I will bring that out. Ooh, and I'm trying to multitask going back and forth here. Somebody's asking what other veggies would you use instead of mushrooms? Honestly, if you weren't using mushrooms, you could totally do this with tofu, tempeh, eggplant is really great. Um, you can definitely, you know, use whatever your favorite veggie is. I mean, you, I, we've definitely seen like tempura, everything, right? You can even do like asparagus if you wanted to. So it's really, maybe it's whatever you have on hand in your fridge before you go on your trip. I know we always try to use up whatever we have in the fridge, or I try to throw anything in the freezer before I'm about to head out of town. So it could be that, right? All right, that first one is almost ready for some show and tell action, not quite yet. I can show you here with this one, hopefully, oh, and I'm taking some of that breading off. Hopefully you can kind of see here that nice brown crispy exterior. That's what I'm looking for. A nice brown crunchy panko breadcrumb coating. And I want to be careful to not overcrowd the pan. It can probably fit maybe one more but i want to be mindful to make sure each one doesn't get overcrowded that's the thing with mushrooms when you overcrowd sometimes they sweat more than they crisp up so you want to be cautious of that even in this situation or even if you're just pan searing mushrooms you want to make sure that you're not overdoing it sometimes we want to go more quickly and it just doesn't work out that way so we have to kind of go with the flow of how these mushrooms need to cook. Another thing I will say with cooking mushrooms generally is that they can take quite a bit of oil. Um, mushrooms do have, just by nature, quite a bit of liquid in them, water. And so when you're cooking with mushrooms, don't skimp out on the oil. You wanna make sure that you have enough oil there that you're going to be able to properly pan fry. How long do you fry them in oil? The first, min uh, the first side will be about one to three minutes, second side another one to three minutes. So all in all, it could be up to six minutes to cook uh, each one of the individual mushrooms. The type of oil that I'm using, that's a great question. Right now I'm using organic non-GMO rice bran oil, the type of oil that we use to, to cook our food at Todo Verde. And uh, here at home, I also use grapeseed oil, avocado oil, sunflower seed oil. Um, so my favorite, I would say, is probably the grapeseed oil and rice bran. Those two are kind of my main go-to oils. My heat is kind of dropping. I don't hear the sizzling as prominent, so I'm going to bring my heat up just a touch. Sometimes the, the uh, temperature of the oil will drop down I'm just... Hopefully you can still hear me. I'll speak loudly to make sure you can hear me. I'm gonna start pulling out some of these mushrooms here. And this is actually a good example to show you what a higher temp looks like versus the lower temp. Let me pull these out. This one is not quite ready yet. Ooh, and I have some crispy bits that I am excited to also include in the sandwich and the torta. So I have some mushrooms here. Hopefully you can see it. Yes. Okay, great. So these I just pulled out. You can see I have a nice 
crunchy exterior, a little bit more golden than these first ones, but still all the while, really great, really exciting. So I'm gonna keep frying up a few more. I probably won't get to all of them right now just because I wanna make sure that we have time to go all the way through and finish up our torta. So I'll just finish up frying up this last one. And while that's going, let me just kind of clean up my station here and get ready for some torta activity here. I'm just gonna pull these over to the side. Put these in the flour actually. There we go. All right. So while that last one's cooking, all I wanna do is I wanna get my avocado ready. I wanna also get my tomato slice, slices ready. And then I also just want to let you all know what other ingredients I have here. So I have some lettuce that I grew in my backyard, literally. Um, it's from, my, from a tower that I have, a hydroponic tower that's growing. And that is gonna be a nice little freshness to the torta. I also have some slices, some, I like really thick slices of tomato. So some nice thick slices of tomato. I wanna make sure the tomato is there, prominent, a uh, prominent part of the torta. I also have an avocado, which is, feels like it's perfect. So what I like to do is just kind of squeeze down on the top and bottom of the aguacate. And if it gives just a little bit, I think it's gonna be just right. I've also recently heard a tip where if you take the little stem off and it looks green inside where the stem came off, that means it's also just ready for us to use. So I'm going to open this one up and we have a perfect avocado, perfect avocado. Great, so I'm excited to use this. I know in the recipe, if you saw the ingredient list, it said half of a Haas avocado um, medium sized Hoffs avocado. I might end up using the whole thing. I love avocado. I have an avocado tattoo. I grew up eating avocados. So I'll probably end up using the whole thing because who wants to leave a half of avocado behind? Unless you already have a half of avocado just hanging out in your fridge already. Um, you definitely want to try to, to use up what you have here. All right. So let me make sure I'm seeing the questions properly. What else do you grow at home? Oh, awesome. Uh, I love growing things at home. Uh, last year, I grew everything from lemongrass, tomatoes, cilantro. I have tons of mint, Mexican oregano. Um, what else do I have? Lettuces. I have a little olive tree that I'm cultivating, rosemary, lavender, like just a ton of different stuff. I'm so fortunate to be uh, in, in our home now that has a lot of green space. Before that, I lived in a studio and I had to go to a community garden plot. And now I'm able to grow so much food here at home. Um, and now I'm actually starting to focus a little bit more on like California natives and also trying to play around with the, the sunlight. So I'm going to plant my olive tree in an area that provides a little bit more shade for some of the plants that just can't take this LA heat during the summer. It's crazy uh, global warming, but that's not what this class is about. I'm going to get crazy sidetracked right now. We won't do that. Um, but those are some of the things that I grow. So I am going to uh, just pretend that we cooked through all of the mushrooms, which we did not, but let's pretend we did. Let's pretend that I didn't like almost kill that last mushroom and burn it because I'm so distracted talking about what I grow at home. But let me turn off this front oil, make sure my back burner is on. And the other thing I like to do is just um, lightly toast my, my bread. And here's the thing, if you are not familiar with virote or bolillo, um, this is a big debate in the Mexican community. Is it virote? Is it bolillo? Um, and so some people use the, those two names interchangeably. I believe that there is a difference. Um, the bolillo, as I know it, is more of like a French bread, typically using white flour, sometimes wheat flour. In this case, I'm using wheat flour. And it's a, a softer bread. Um, it, it almost feels like it's slightly sweet, but it doesn't have any sugar added or anything like that. It's just flour, water. It, it's a really simple recipe. And then virote uh, will sometimes, uh, depending on where you're from in Mexico, will be a little bit fermented, a little bit more dense. 
a little bit crunchier exterior. I'm going to put this down to start toasting as I talk about that. And um, sometimes salado. So if you're salted. So if you're from Guadalajara, where people eat tortas ahogadas, which is like a drowned torta, uh, literally drowned in salsa, then you need a bread that's like able to hold up against that, where like this really soft, airy one is not able to do that. You really need like a dense, firm bread. And that is the birote that I know, birote salado. Um, so that's just my two cents on it. It, it. Don't go crazy on the chat. Like don't at me on, on you know, social media. People are going to come for me for trying to talk about that right now. But, um, but that's how I grew up kind of distinguishing between the two. And growing up, I mostly ate um, bolillo, which is the unsalted version. And then birote, um, I ate when I ate like tortas ahogadas or something that was like a little bit more hearty or substantial. So I just want to warm this through. It doesn't have to get crazy toasted. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of mayonnaise to the inside of the bread and toast that and it gets a little crispiness because obviously mayonnaise is oil based. So that is kind of creating a little bit of a, a sear on the bread. Do whatever you love to do with your bread. If you want that little cr crispy sear on there, totally do that. Or you can just toast it to soften. I really like um, my bread to be a little bit more toasted. My partner likes his bread to just be soft. So I like to just find a middle ground somewhere where we compromise and we're all happy. So I, once I have my little bit of a slight toastedness, and the bread is warm through. I can add that a little bit longer if I wanted to, but that's like a nice toasty amount. I'm going to lose a little bit of that crispiness if I don't eat it right away. In this case, I am going to eat it right away. It's going to be great. Let me make sure these other ones are all doing okay back here. And I'm going to start layering on some of the other ingredients that are going to make this torta extra special. I mean, it's one thing to just add the mushroom milanesa on there. And it's another thing to layer on all these delicious flavors that really, really make the dish. So I'll add the second one. You can see it got a little toasty here on the edge too. And it's still a little soft in most places, but it has that little crispy layer on it. So I am going to start with adding, I have a couple tablespoons of vegan mayo, and this is enough for two portions. So I'm not gonna use all of it for one torta. I'm just going to spread some of that on there. Nice, even layer. Let me grab a little bit more. Maybe I will end up using it on just one torta. Who knows? Let's see. There we go. Let me share the love on both slices. And if you are a mayo lover, go hard. You're on vacation. You're on a road trip. Like, go a little hard. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully, you find, like, a nice little park area where you can eat your, your torta and be happy. Be happy, you know? Okay, so now we have that. Then I'm gonna add a few layers of our lettuce, the lettuce that I grew outside, which are a few, a medley of a few different varieties of lettuce. And once I get that nice little layer of lettuce, oh, that's my dog, Chucky, barking. Sorry about that. Chucky's my little guardian. So she's uh, protecting the fort. And I'm going to add some of our mushroom milanesa. So I'm definitely going to go for this like extra crispy piece here. Look at that. That's definitely going in right on the edge. The first bite I want to take. I'm going to grab these and just layer them right in. Add as much as you'd like. Here I'm going to be able to fit about three slices. I'm going to eat some just crunchy panko because it's there and it's so good. Four pieces. And let me spread that out a little bit. There we go. And hopefully you can see that okay. And then I'm going to add on my avocado, my tomato. Here we go. Add on some slices of avocado. So this is going to give it this nice, rich, fatty texture to it. We already have fried milanesa on there. We have some vegan mayo. Why not just go super decadent with avocado, which I love. So I'll add about four slices of that there. A couple slices of tomato on there. Hopefully I can get it to 
stay on there. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's going to be my, my challenge of my trip, trying to keep everything all together. I'm going to add a couple of uh, slices of pickled jalapeno. This, I think, makes the torta. A little, a few slices of pickled jalapeno is going to really what, what makes it for me feel like, like a Mexican sandwich, like a torta. Um, if this is not your jam, totally okay. But that little pickle in there, I think, uh, brings a really nice punch of acid and brightness to the dish. Um, sometimes I have a whole chile on the side that I just bite into uh, if you don't have the slices. So you can do either or. And then a little bit of salsa, because why not? So I have a little bit of salsa roja here, and it's a little chunky. I like that little chunkiness, salsa de tomate. So I'm just going to pour some of that on my bread. Hopefully some of that will kind of absorb in. And then we are going to carefully bring this all together. If you're able to wrap it up in a piece of parchment paper, piece of plastic wrap, and all that kind of compacting together is gonna hold it tight a little bit better. And when you open it up hours later, it's gonna be just perfect. But here is our torta, check that out. So good, so, so good. So any questions coming up in the chat? I wanna take a bite as I'm waiting to see if any questions come in. Ooh, here we go. Definitely getting the crunch from the Milanesa mushrooms. They are so good. I even thought right now I kind of like sprinkled a little bit of like sal de colima, sea salt from Mexico onto the mushrooms after they came out of the oil. But this is seriously so, so good. Like this is a hit. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, trekking out on the road, and you pull this out of your snack bag with some chips and guacamole. Yeah, yeah, eso, like, in Spanish you'd be like, eso es todo, that's it. Like that's all you need, you know? So how do you make a wet torta? Or it's called in Spanish, torta ahogada, which means, a, um, ahogada means a drowning, a drowned torta. Um, and so essentially the birote salado is really what's gonna, like I said, hold it hold that sauce um, so that it doesn't just like um, become a big ball of mush. And then the way it's typically served is it has a layer of frijoles or refried beans. Oh my God, I forgot to add the refried beans to this. I have refried beans to add to this in the back burner that I lost track of. So th that needs to get added into here. Um, but it gets a layer of refried beans, um, some carnitas, or in my case, like I'll do like shredded mushrooms cooked carnita style, or I'll also do, um, uh, sometimes I'll do some shredded jackfruit. And then you make your salsa on the side. There's sometimes two salsas. There's a tomato-based salsa that's spiced with guajillos and other chiles. And then there's a spicier chile de árbol salsa. And you drown the torta in that sauce or you ladle it on and then you also serve it with uh, limon and that spicy chile de arbol and sometimes salt such a good dish it's messy your hands are completely covered um, if you've eaten some dishes in mexico typically the plate is also like lined in plastic because it's just such a messy dis dish and then they're able to just kind of toss that and um, reuse the plate but such a good dish so the only thing I didn't add, which I was supposed to add, which I'll probably try to open up that top portion of the torta and just give it a little smother of refried beans. You can see here, I just have a small pot of refried beans. You don't need very much, like a cup of refried beans is absolutely enough. You can even do two for one. Here I have about like two cups or so. So what I could do is I can do the one cup for the two tortas and then the rest of it, I could just blend in a little bit of chipotle and have a bean dip that I eat with tortilla chips and I am good to go. I get lots of protein. I have a really good 
side dish or a little snack to eat aside from the fofa. So I'm going to open this up and try to see if I can just add that little bit of frijoles to the top, which it should have been on the bottom, but that kind of helps hold everything together. Hopefully this will be the glue that we need for our tomatoes to stick in place. Here we go. Look at that. So I've just uh, opened it up, added my, my frijoles. I have some lettuce and some uh, jalapenos that are trapped in there, but this is going to all hold together really, really nicely. All right. So any other questions out there that are coming up before we sign off? If not, I think we are coming to the close of our class. And I definitely always want to uh, invite you all to follow us on social media. I do a lot of recipes on our platforms on, on Instagram and TikTok that you can always check out to include more plant-based recipes into your everyday lifestyle. And of course, I want to thank Tastemade. And I also want to thank our friends at Honda for making this all happen. So thank you all so, so much. And I hope you enjoy this torta de mushroom milanesa.